Hey, Vision Vintage subscribers, all four of you, I think that is. Uh, we're going to be doing a really cool thing in October. I'm going to be doing video reviews of some of the vintage horror movies that are out there. I love scary films. I hope you do too, because we're going to do probably one of these a week if I can pull it off. All right. So what are we doing today? Killer Clowns from Outer Space, baby. Right here is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and one of my favorite horror films sort of turned into a cult classic now, and I hope you haven't seen this thing, but if you have, then you're the lucky one, because this movie is awesome. Why, you may ask? First of all, I love the cover of this thing. Take a look. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and this little line here at the bottom, in space, no one can eat ice cream. Why? Why can people in space not eat ice cream? Why are there people not being able to eat ice cream because you're in space? What does that have to do with the movie? All right, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, 1988, stars Grant Kramer and Suzanne Snyder. Grant Kramer plays a guy named Mike Tobacco. Suzanne Snyder plays a girl named Debbie Stone. First of all, the movie opens up with this kicking 80s music, and I'm pretty sure that the music was made specifically for the film because it's either called Killer Clowns or Killer Clowns from Outer Space or something like that. Uh, it was done by a sort of punk band named the Dickies and apparently they're still doing shows. Also in the opening sequence we see the Big Top Burger which plays like a specific role throughout the whole film. We also see Officer Mooney who is played by John Vernon who was in several famous things like Ernest Goes to the Camp, MacGyver, The A-Team. Need I say any more? The dude's an awesome actor. After the beginning scenes, we end up at a little place called the Top of the World. What's the Top of the World? It's like the cool hangout for all the kids. You know, they go and park and kind of chill out with each other. This is where we first kind of meet Scotty Palmer, although his name in this is Mike Tobacco. Grant Kramer, the actor. He and Debbie are chilling out in their car and all this cool stuff, hanging out. And the next thing you know, we see the Terenzi Brothers. The Terenzi Brothers are sort of like the Revenge of the Nerds, only a little bit cooler. They drive an ice cream truck. They got a couple of girls in the back that they promised could eat as much ice cream as they wanted to, so that's sort of like their gig. Well, while everybody's at the top of the world, we see a big crash come through from a shooting star. And I've noticed in a lot of 80s films that UFOs tend to be connected with shooting stars. First, you think it's like a meteor or meteorite, whichever one actually makes it through the Earth's atmosphere. I'm not a science teacher. That's my wife. The shooting star goes overhead. Everybody sees it. Everybody's amazed. So Mike Tobacco and his girl Debbie Snyder decide, hey, we need to go check this out. It just went right over the hill. Did I say Debbie Snyder a minute ago? I'm mixing the two up. Before Mike and Debbie could make it up to where the crash site was, Pooh Bear and Farmer Jean make it there first. Now, Farmer Jean's sort of like your run-of-the-mill West Virginia backwoods farmer who goes up, he talks kind of like this. Well, they go up and they see this big top. I'm talking not the big top burger from the beginning of the film. I'm talking about a tent, you know, one of the big old circus tents. So here goes old Farmer Gene up. He grabs a hold of it and he gets shocked. His dog disappears, not specifically in that order. And this is where we get the side of one of the first clowns. When you take a look at the clowns for the first time, you get a sort of a uh, feel of Ronald McDonald mixed with walking dead zombies. Uh, the makeup's really cool, has awesome texture. I was really surprised by this as a kid and uh, it was quite realistic to me, unlike what they're doing with all the CGI these days. Farmer Gene ends up disappearing and Mike and Debbie finally make it up to the big top crash site and they see the tent as well. They think it's some big old gig where maybe some circus has just moved into town. They get inside, they're looking through it, and Mike makes the comment, this looks like this place was decorated by Clowns R Us. Good line, Mike. Good line. They finally make it down into sort of the heart uh, of the whole operation and end up finding these pink cotton candy cocoons where they don't know it at the moment, but the human beings have been wrapped up in these cotton candy cocoons that are delicious treats for the killer clowns from outer space. So Mike and Debbie finally get caught by the clowns in the big top and take off running, trying to escape the clowns. They realize there's something not quite right. 
Uh, they get launched at by this uh, sort of bazooka thingy that the clowns have that shoots popcorn. At this moment, we're not really sure what the popcorn is for. They make their escape, and next thing we know, we have this really cool scene where there's a sign on the left hand of the screen that says uh, Crescent Cove 5 miles, and then you have the uh, clowns walking very slowly. You see them from behind like this. You got all the mist and fog, and it's nighttime. Really creepy shot, and then that's where the hardcore music kicks in. Dun -a -dun -a -dun -a -dun, you know. One of my favorite parts of the film is where there's a biker gang and one of the clowns has followed this biker gang into this alley or on the side of the street somewhere to spray paint all over the buildings. One of the things I like about the scene when he first pulls up, one of the biker gang guys says something about Jojo, you know, they call him Jojo, like Jojo the Clown. It's this, it's this clown right here, my favorite clown out of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. See, he's like a tiny little guy. He has the green sort of bozo haircut, a little top green thing coming off the top of his head right here. And he has his own little motorbike. It's a little clown motorbike. And one of the biker bullies comes up and says, oh, can I ride your bike or whatever? And he says no. And then he asks him if he can squeeze his horn. The clown goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Next thing you know, the biker picks his bike up, smashes his bike, and that really kind of irritates the clown. Well, if anybody knows anything about killer clowns from outer space, you don't mess with the clowns. So the clown ends up with boxing gloves on, and he's doing this right here, and the next thing you know, the guy says, what are you going to do, knock my block off? And the next thing you know, tiny guy right here goes, boom! And that's where you see a head fly off. So that's like the really first big gory part of the scene. You see the head, it falls in a trash can. Now one of the things I wanted to say about popcorn, I mentioned it earlier with the bazooka and that shoots popcorn, it plays a couple of different roles in this film. Uh, first of all, you think it's going to be bullets that come out of the gun, and then it's popcorn, and then you're kind of like, well, that's not going to hurt anybody. But what ends up happening is they get some of the popcorn stuck in their clothing, and that was Mike and Debbie when they were in the big top, or you know, running away from the clowns. And then we find out later on that, you know, Debbie gets taken home by an officer named Dave and Mike and Dave go out to try to find clowns because nobody believes Mike and Debbie. And at this point, Debbie goes home, she's taking a shower trying to relax while there's popcorn in her clothes. It gets thrown in the hamper and then the hamper starts moving. So you know something's going to happen. Something's going on with that weird popcorn on her clothes. Well, Officer Mooney doesn't believe any of this. You know, he thinks everybody's crazy. He thinks everybody's trying to sort of uh, make him look like a fool and so he's staying at the station. Well while he's at the station a big old clown pops up and uh, turns him into a human ventriloquist dummy. Pretty gory scene. Probably the most gory in my opinion of the whole movie. Well while Mike and Dave are out you know looking for the clowns they end up finding one crash into a building. And Dave goes back to the station to get Mooney and tell him that this stuff's real and maybe try to call some more cops in to help. Mike, meanwhile, hooks back up with the Terenzi brothers and goes back to Debbie's place only to find that uh, the popcorn in her hamper had turned out to be these little creatures and things of that nature. Uh, and the clowns come to Debbie's house, pick her up, put her in a balloon, and then they take her off. Weird thing was when Mike and Dave went to go look at the big top to try to discover where the clowns were when they were making their big crazy claims, the big top was gone. So at this point, we're not really sure where the whole big top thing or the clown UFO has gone to. But it's at this point they end up seeing a parade of the clowns and they see them carrying people and they end up following them and end up following a clown car back to an amusement park. What a perfect ending place for killer clowns from outer space. An amusement park. They pull up and this is where a really crazy scene happens where the clowns all come out of a car. Basically every clown cliche you can think of is thrown into this film and of course at this point they pick up pies and throw it at a security guard at the amusement park. What are you gonna do with those pies, boys? Ends up piling up like the Wicked Witch from the West and the Wizard of Oz. Anyhow, everybody ends up back at the big top here at the amusement park now, their new location, and they end up having a big battle with this thing that I think that the director's called the Clownzilla. It's a gigantic clown. I'm not going to tell you exactly what happened with this particular battle. You're going to have to watch the film. 
Um, I'm just basically trying to build this film up and let you know what it meant to me as a kid. You know, this is back in the days of animatronics and using real makeup and real special effects, not this CGI junk that people just lazily throw into movies these days. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, 1988. You gotta go watch this thing.